this lesson we are going to learn how to make the top stitching by hand that we're going to be doing on the center back and on edges as well. There are a couple of different ways we can do the top stitching. Places like the center back where we don't have to worry so much with the wrong side of the fabric. We work mostly with the right side of the fabric. And there are places like the, the vent area, the bottom hem of the sleeve, back vent and the center front of the coat in which we have to pay attention to both sides of the fabric. Oh, the belt as well. So we will have to watch both sides when we're doing the top stitching. Threads I can recommend for the top stitching have used a silk thread on the on the sample of the instructions. You can wax the, the thread if you'd like to. Mostly I don't. It doesn't make much of a difference for me. But if you are to wax a thread, you will wax a thread that's a natural fiber. Silk is much easier to do the top stitching by hand because it slides more easily and tangles less. If you can find a silk thread that matches the color of your fabric, it will be great. However, in some cases, you just can't find a silk thread that matches the, the right color of your fabric. The second option for threads it's a top stitching thread number 70 that you can use. This one you don't need waxing because it's polyester and it's just won't break. In my case, in the video, I haven't found a color that matched close enough to my the color of my fabric. So I am using the same thread as I'm using for sewing the coat. It's not this one. <laughs> But this is uh, 120, so it's a regular way of thread that we sew garments. And I am using a 120 for doing my top stitching by hand. I would generally recommend, if you want to do it, if you have a fabric that has a plain surface, it's not a textured kind of wool, because the top stitching by hand is not going to be visible. And you're going to have a lot of work because this adds a lot of work on doing the stitches where in a fabric that's heavily textured, you're not really going to be seeing it. So I just suggest to use it on more plain weave fabrics like the one I'm using. One information I would like to add when you're working with the top stitching of this coat is that you can definitely do without the top stitching guide that we have done in throughout the coat. You can do it freehand. The thing with the freehand is that for it to look nice, you should have like a consistent distance of the stitches so they look nice. And the thing when you have the top stitching guideline is that it gives you that consistency the only added negative point I would say is that you have to remove these stitches after and sometimes it's not that easy to remove and you have to be very careful when removing those. So that's the what I want to say that you can definitely do freehand. It's just that I find with the guiding stitch my stitches are more consistently symmetrical and they look throughout like, as if it had been done by someone who was you know very agile with the needle. We're going to begin doing our top stitching by hand with the sample in which we don't have to worry about on how the stitches are going to look on the wrong side and this would be applicable to areas like the center back but not the vent and the shoulder seam. I'm going to be using a all-purpose thread so this is not a top stitching thread this is just a regular thread and I'm using a needle that doesn't have a very wide needle eye so it's basically the same width as the rest of the needle. I'm going to be using as well a thimble because this is a lot of stitches and it actually hurts my finger if I don't have anything to protect it. I pulled my top stitching tail threads to the wrong side and I trimmed them down. And what I usually do, I don't knot my thread when I'm doing this kind of uh, stitches, even though you can. In this case, where you don't 
see the wrong side of the fabric because we're going to be covering with the lining. I insert my needle where the stitches begin and I'm just going to leave a tiny tail for now and on the same stitch I will stitch a couple of times because this is going to secure my stitching place so my thread is covering the top stitching guide So on the wrong side, now I did a couple of stitches on the same spot. On the wrong side, I skip one stitch, which I also skipping on the right side. And on the same place where the stitch begins and ends, on where it forms a stitch, I come out and I cover one stitch, I go down the needle, come back up, skipping one stitch and this is how I do all the stitches, always skipping one stitch. I suggest that when you do this stitching to choose a place that has a very good lighting, not a resting light, because this puts a lot of strain on your eyes. So just go on skipping one stitch at a time and covering the other stitch with our thread. Also keep in mind to have your stitches straight not diagonally because they don't look nice if you now I have finished the top stitching of the sample and you can see that on the wrong side the stitches are not entirely even because I wasn't worrying too much on how the stitches look and we still have our stitching guideline and I will be removing it in a moment. Now we're going to be doing the stitches on the sample that has both sides and we need to pay attention on how the stitches will be looking. What I usually do with this one, I insert my needle inside of the seam and I aim it towards a stitching, like the end of a stitch. There is no knot on my thread, so I stop when I don't see the thread anymore and on the same spot but I have to watch where the needle is coming out on the back side as well I will go back into the same hole because it needs to be skipped on the wrong side so I go back from the same hole and just catching the upper layer, not the bottom, because the bottom needs to look like I have skipped. I will do a couple of stitches on the same spot because I need to secure my thread and I go back in. So always watching both sides. So on the wrong side of the fabric, I go into one of the where the stitches end and I watch on the other side. And this is I w this will be repeating throughout the whole the whole line of stitches. When we get to the end of the stitch, we're going to do a st one stitch in the same place. So I will just go into the same spot, 
couple of times and then I will just thread through the end of my stitch and I will insert my needle within the layers as far as I can with the needle. I have my threading side and I just pull it a little bit and I trim. When I trim and stretch the fabric the rest of the thread goes back into the into the, the coat. Now I'm going to show you how I unpick my stitching guide because we need to remove it. We're going to begin to unpick through the bobbin side which is usually easier to unpick. What I do is just go to the places where we have skipped a stitch and I break the stitch with uh, with a small scissors, like a pointy small scissors. I wouldn't go ahead pulling everything. I would just because sometimes the the stitches that we have created over they have caught the thread and they are actually going through the stitches, the stitching guideline, and we need to be careful when we're pulling not to break the stitches we have done by hand. So I just go carefully watching. If you feel that the stitching guideline is tight to remove you can't just pull it you have to break near where it is break as in cutting cut as close as you can and uh, slowly pull from one side and the other okay here i can feel that my stitch is very tight to remove so what i do i cut it near to the stitching guideline and i pull through the other side now i have mostly removed them from the wrong side of the the sample I go to the right side and I begin where I have skipped the stitches just to bring the top uh, thread up you can see that in some spots it actually doesn't go up because it's caught in the hand stitches so you can see my thread doesn't come out all the way so what I do I just trim near Here I can feel that my stitches, my hand stitches gone through the stitching guideline. This is how it looks on a first sample. You have a decorative stitch running through what it would be the shoulder seam, the center back seam, and it adds a little bit of interest to the, to the coat, I would say. And it's a stitch that's often used on very expensive garments. I hope you have enjoyed seeing how the the stitches they look. I would just generally advise going straight with the iron on them. Maybe use the cloth like we have been doing throughout all the pressing that we do on the right side of the coat. 